Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. This is Vincent Chan. In this lecture, we are going to continue our lesson on the stability and the Miller compensation, and present you a design example. First of all, let's quickly review what we learned from the previous lectures. Pole frequencies. So here's a Miller compensation. If we solve, if you solve this, uh, the transfer function, uh, the VO2, the output voltage, divided by the input current, the IO1. So the VO2 means what? It means the output voltage of the second stage. So think about a multi-stage amplifier, the input differential and gain stage and the output stage. So let's take the output of the second stage and divide by what? by the output current of the first stage, which is the input current of the second stage. All right, so this is the result. The transfer function, or you can say the trans resistance. So trans function or trans resistance functions gives you what? Gives you two pole in the denominator and one zero in the numerator. So after compensation, after you connecting, the feedback capacitance, the CC, the Miller capacitance. So now you have the two new pole frequencies, the omega HP1 prime and the omega HP2 prime, and the one zero. Okay. So for the four pole frequency, how are you gonna get the once you get the transfer function solved, then how are you gonna get the pole frequencies? How are you gonna solve the pole frequency? So first of all, you assume you assume the omega HP1, you assume a dominant pole condition, the dominant pole approximation. So omega P1 prime, the first pole is much less than the second pole of frequency. So therefore, you can solve the two pole frequency, just comparing the coefficients in the denominator polynomial. And then you support, then this result support your previous assumption, the dominant pole approximation, so which construct a so-called self-consistent loop, a self-consistent loop. So now the two new pole frequency after compensation has been solved. So here's the design example I want to present, but I am not going to solve this problem completely, okay? So the detail calculation is gonna be assigned in your homework. Okay, so my job here in this lecture is to show you the design example and the, the reason, the logic behind this design. All right, so here's the three stage, multi stage up end, the differential stage, and gain stage, and then the final stage is the upper stage, the equivalent circuit before compensation. So before we can before the compensating capacitor is connected, all right. So before compensation, this this is the equivalent circuit of the second stage. So you see a time constant on the input side, and the time constant on at the output side, right? At the input side and at the output side. So let's assume this is the three pole. The whole up end can be approximated or can be characterized by three pole, all right? And now the third pole, 10 to the seventh power, radian per second is known. And then the first two poles, omega HP1, again, it, this is before, before compensation, all right? All right, so there's a before and there's an after. So this is before. So before compensation, omega HP1 and omega HP2 is appointed, are appointed by the two time constant embedded in the second stage, respectively. Now here's the omega HP1, 1 over R1C1. Here's omega HP2, all right? So one over R2, C2, 
So the first time constant, the input time constant is associated with uh, omega HP1. Then omega HP2 is decided by the output time constant of the second stage. All right, so here's the number, here's the data. So R1, you see the R1, 100 kilo ohm, C1, 100 picofarad. So R2, 50 kilo ohm, and C2, 20 picofarad. And the transconductance of the second stage is 20 milliamp per volt. So I give you five data. So two resistance, two capacitance, and then the one transconductance. Now, this is the uncompensated R band, right? And then you see the circuit becomes what? Becomes a voltage follower, right? The output of the R band connecting back to the input of the differential stage, right? In other words, this, the simpler, simpler version of the left-hand side is now what you see on the right, right? This is the voltage follower. This is the voltage follow. So pay attention to the blue line, the blue feedback. So then, then this circuit now, this R band is now turns into a, is turned into, we turn this R band into a what? Into a closed loop configuration. It co turns into a unit gain voltage follow, all right? But when you turn this into a feedback, then you face a stability issue. I'm just trying to explain the reason behind this, the story behind this design. The stability issue, because why? Because this is the three pole. When the amplifier has the three poles, then this circuit faced a stability issue. Then we have to solve, we have to tackle this stability issue. Why? Because the phase margin of this follower will become negative. So the circuit, in other words, this is the unstable. The follower is not stable. So what do you mean by the follower is not stable? When you input a step function, an output will become what? It will become like this, okay? We'll, we'll create this kind of the growing oscillation. The circuit is now become unstable. So you, it's your job as a designer to tackle this issue, to fix this issue, but how? Miller compensation. So the R band now is, then, then we use the Miller compensation technique to tackle this, try to solve this. So by connecting on chip, on chip, a compensating capacitor on the feedback path of the second stage. Right, so that's, now the CC is connected between collector and the base. The feedback path, the Miller compensation. Miller compensation. So here's the objective. Here's the objective. The objective we want the objective of the compensation is to fix the stability issue and after compensation, this circuit can present a 55 degree of phase margin. So the objective is 45, excuse me, the 45 degree of phase margin for this unit gain follower. 45 degree of phase margin for this unit gain follower. And then the question is, so here's the objective, 45 degree of phase margin. So what is the question? Try to find out how big the compensating capacitor should be. How big, what's the value of the compensation, compensating capacitor should be? Should we assign? Should we assign? What's the value of the compensating Capacitor. So here's the question. Try to solve the compensation capacitor. But let me ask you, when we tackle this, what kind of step we have to go through? Number one, first of all, you have to figure it out. You have to 
understand the before compensation first. It's the uncompensated open. So this is the uncompensated. So we'll remove, we'll remove the compensating capacitor. So now it's the uncompensated. Three poles, right? Three poles. And then here's the first one. So you just simply plug in the R1 and C1 into this equation. Then you realize, oh, okay, the first pole frequency is 10 to the fifth power radian per second. And then you try to solve, try to get the pole frequency, the second pole frequency. And then you plug in again, R2, C2 into this equation. Then you realize, oh, all right, so it's the 10 to the 16th power. So three poles for uh, uncompensated, five, six, seven, 10 to the fifth power, 10 to the sixth power, 10 to the seventh power. All right, so you see on the right hand side, right hand side, let's do this again. The first pole, second pole, and the third pole. And then body plot, body plot for the magnitude response. This is the magnitude response, and then the phase response. I don't have to belabor the detail, okay? And then I'm supposed, you are supposed to be very familiar with this. And then what? Then what? Then feedback. For the uncompensated R band, then we turn this uncompensated R band into a follower, feedback, into a voltage follower. So what's the beta of the voltage follower? What's the beta, the feedback factor for this voltage follower? One, right? So what do you mean by the one on this log diagram? Okay, zero decibel, zero decibel. So this pink line, uh, which is associated with the beta of one, unity gain, then you try to find the pink point, you see the intersecting point? You see the intersecting point, the pink point. Then, then the corresponding phase, what's the corresponding phase under this condition? Exceeds 180 degrees. And it's also very close to 170. It has gone too far. Unstable. Right? So this is the unstable. So now, what's the objective of this problem solving, this design example. So it's your responsibility to try to find out, try to compensate this op -end. Try to compensate this op -end. On the top is before, on the bottom is after. So for the uncompensated op -end, three poles. And after compensated, after compensate, after you put on the compensating capacitor, the third pole is still fixed, unchanged. And then the first two poles is gonna go like this. It's gonna go like this. Omega HP1 becomes omega HP1 prime. And omega HP2 becomes omega P2 prime. And then you, you have to solve, here, here's the step two. You have to know this first to solve the new pole frequency. Now you have to solve these two new pole frequency. So here's the first new pole frequency after compensation omega HP on prime. And then when you solve this, let me give you some hint, okay? Before you do the homework. There are five turns, but what do you mean by the GM R2? How big is the GM R2? You see the GM is 20, R2 is 50, right? 1,000, 1,000. So the, although there are five terms, it's a little bit complicated in the denominator, but the third one, the third term actually dominates. The rest of four you can, are negligible. And then so this is, you can simply, when you solve the homework, you can simply, you don't need to use the comprehensive, the solution for omega HP1 prime. You can simply adopt the simplified version for the omega HP1 P1 for prime for the sake of uh, simplicity, right? So this is the omega HP1 prime, the approximate expression for the omega HP1. So then here's the expression for, for what? For omega HP2 prime. So 
So let me ask you this. Uncompensated. The blue. So omega HQ and prime is unknown, right? So after you put on the compensating network. Now omega HP2 prime is also unknown. There are two purple unknown. And compensating capacitor is also unknown. So here's the question I want to ask you. How many, before you solve this, how many variables you are facing? Are you facing here? How many variables are, are you facing here? Three, right? So this is your homework. How are you going to solve this? How are you going to solve this? You only have two equations in front of you. 11th side of the slide, think about this. You only have two governing equations, but you're facing three variables. So now it's your time. So this is also the next shelf when you got this homework. So if you're facing this kind of challenge, try to think about this. And then you could come back to me when you submit the homework and we can have a couple of round of discussion if you still have uh, some question, all right? So I hope you, at least you figured out something, you learned something from this lecture before you dive into the homework. Thanks for watching.